And I really realized that drugs and alcohol aren't fun for me. They bring me to my knees, literally. Right. Like, sure. Yeah. And, put you and I don't some... need that as a crutch anymore. Right. Well, cheers to uh, <laughs> drinking carbonated <laughs> to... waters, my dear. Yeah. Cheers I'm to all that. about the carbonated water. Mm-hmm. Myself as well. Yeah. Do you like these, by the way? Yeah, they're good. So these, I told you where you can get these, eh? Mm, the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, but it's the superstar. I'm not just saying get them at the grocery store. Not just... Health food section in uh, in superstar. Very nice. They're good. Yeah. Um. Okay, so you realized that you were um, an addict and couldn't touch alcohol. Mm-hmm. I had the same issue. I mean, my issue was always, uh, at the time, I'm sure it would still be with, again, I like to think that I anxiety and depression was my problem and I self-medicated mm-hmm. and now that I've taken care of that maybe I could but I won't mm-hmm. and she's looking at me like you're full of shit you're <laughs> so full of shit right so, maybe you're not a, t- not a type three what's, okay tell me these types tell me what a type is so type two is pretty much like you, you can drink and you can put it down you can drink and, like, and put it down like you you have that bit of control okay like a type three you know when you drink you're not gonna stop like it's or like you're not a normal drinker like you're not just gonna go out for a few beers and stop and like not even like the next day you're not gonna drink like you can you can drink like a normal person really and as a type two yeah but not a type three type three is like when you drink you're drinking to get drunk you're gonna be drunk you're gonna be doing it again yeah okay yeah what about a type one is there a type one i don't know why would they have just type two and type I'm three? I'm sure that type one is probably just like a regular person. A regular person? Yeah. So is, there, is type four like you're totally drinking every day? And is there a type four? I don't think so. Okay. So, uh, all right. Th- I don't really like these categories. One, two, and three. Okay. <laughs> I just know type two and three. Two and three? I just know I'm a type three, really. <laughs> Fair enough. I guess it doesn't really matter as long as you're self aware yeah. of what you are. Mm-hmm. So, um, tell me about how your your life has been since you stopped drinking. I mean, would you consider yourself, like when you're in recovery, you're mm-hmm. always in recovery, right? There's yeah. no getting out of recovery. No. <laughs> no. So do you always, like, do you go to meet, is, is going to a meeting every day something that you do, or how do you, how do you stick to this process? Um, well, I, I do go to meetings. CA is my fellowship. Okay. Um, What's CA, like, what do you mean Cocaine fellowship? Anonymous. Cocaine Anonymous. Yeah. So, okay. like, there's Alcoholics Anonymous. Okay. Cocaine Anonymous. Okay. Isn't there like Narcotics Anonymous too? Yes. <laughs> what does that cover? Cocaine and everything else? Uh, honestly, Cocaine Anonymous is any mind or mood altering substance. It's not just cocaine. It's right. a 12 step based fellowship. It's drugs, alcohol, anything really. Right. It's just another fellowship. Okay. And that's that's what these <laughs> call. Like it's called a fellowship. Yeah. Okay. So. The thing, the thing that kind of I and and trust me, I'm not. I haven't picked a fellowship by any means. Mm-hmm. But I went to AA and I brought a friend there recently. And this is interesting to have you on because last week I had someone call me up and they were not ready to go to detox. He has the the withdrawals from alcohol. I didn't know how to deal with them properly, to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. And I'd never seen it to that extent. Um, and we had to cancel last week's podcast on Wednesday because of this, which is why we're doing a double tonight. Yeah. Um, so it's really interesting that this is the topic. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't think he needs AA either. And his problem is purely alcohol and he's not willing to go. His is more of an ego stubbornness issue, I think. Mm-hmm. All addicts have that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It seems to be a common theme, yeah. right? So when it comes to AA and like NA, like are you not allowed are you not allowed to talk about drugs and, and AA? Like is it like okay, we only talk about alcohol here? Why don't think why isn't there one that covers? That's why everything? I go to C A. It's a really? like you can talk about your drug of choice. Because they're all drugs, Freely, right? like, and it's it's not, like, it's a safe place to talk about anything. And I mean... And it helps you? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's not what keeps me sober. It I go there now for, like, the newcomers to, right. like, show to people. To pass it on almost. Because, um, I mean, going through the 12 steps is really what got me sober. Right. Or, like, not got me sober, but showed me how to live a life. Right. Um. Is there a lot of religion involved? 
Um, because I get that. I, I it's that a lot it's a too. god of your understanding. It's just so kind of believing in something bigger than yourself. Knowing, like every morning I wake up, I pray to my higher power. Right. Every night I pray to my higher power, and I don't pray for myself. I used to pray all the time, and I'd be like, "Hey, God, please let me lose some weight here." Yeah. Sure. Now I'm like, I don't pray for myself. I pray for other people. I pray for, pe- pray for people who are suffering. And good for you. And I mean, when I when I'm struggling in a day, I stop and I ask my higher power to for guidance i i have meditation prayers through the big book that i say an acceptance prayer what's the big book the big book of alcoholics anonymous 12 yeah, steps that's what it is it's, yes is it called the big book yeah really okay yeah. see i'm learning stuff tonight uh-huh. um maybe i'll take you to a meeting <laughs> i'll go to a meeting i'm I'm not opposed to learning about this stuff yeah. by any means i mean i think the issue i had was we went to like a, an aa meeting and it was for a close friend and uh, he was having problems stopping, and uh, I wanted I wanted to support him. Mm-hmm. But I went in there, and they didn't really like tell us anything about it. We just heard the stories, and I'm like, okay, I get the stories. That's fine, but mm-hmm. where do we start the program? Like, where do we guide this individual? And I think we just didn't have the guidance at that meeting um, mm-hmm. to really – like he didn't feel it was for him either. I th- How many people go there and feel like this isn't for them? Probably a ton. I mean, yes, like at least at but first. a lot of people, I mean, it's different reasons. It's right. like, I'm in denial that I'm an addict mm-hmm. or like, I don't know. People are just, just aren't ready to give, give them like a sober way. To right. Try. Sure. I mean. I love sober living. I do too. Good. So when was the turning life point for good. you that you like, life is good. Like, <laughs> when was the turning point for you where you realized that sober living was okay? And what do you do with your spare time, too? I'm curious. I mean, what does a sober girl like yourself do that used to be going out to the bars and partying how many nights a week? Three? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Four, five, six? Three's the weekend. Three's the weekend. All right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we would uh, have had so much fun. <laughs> uh, um, so what was the first question? How do I stay sober? What the first that? question was... Um, I guess we can go there. We can ask, how do you stay sober? How do you do it? Well, it's just kind of like I just said with like, through like I work the 12 steps in my everyday life. Yeah. I live within that book. Like, I mean, like, like I said, it showed me how to live a life okay. that's not selfish, that's thinking about other people, that's, I have people in my life now that will call me out on my bullshit in a moment. Like, right. hey, you're in self-pity. You're in denial. You're right. like... So you a need lot to of check the, out your ego. So a lot of the skills that you learn in the 12 steps are life skills, which is it fair to say yeah. that? Yeah. And I mean, normal people have those. <laughs> right. Addicts, I mean, those get lost along the way. I disagree with you. I don't think that normal people have those. I mean, I think everyone could use the 12 steps, to sure. be completely honest. Sure. And it's, we just had a, a podcast about cognitive behavioral therapy. I think there's many life skills that mm-hmm. people aren't getting from living in the systems that we're going to. Mm-hmm. So I, I totally agree with you. And the, the next question was, what do you do with your spare time? Like, what do you do not to stay sober when you're sober? Um, well, I'm in school right now. Which so, is great. So yeah, that consumes a lot of time. I still go to the gym in a healthy way. I like to cook. Yep. Um, I have so a lot of sober friends that are through my recovery. Yeah. My boyfriend... A lot of these people are my best friends now. Yep. Sorry, guys, by the way. She threw the boyfriend in. (laughs) (laughs) Guys are turning off the podcast right now. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) That's good, though. That's awesome. You guys have something in common, and I'm I'm sure you support each other. Yeah, he's amazing. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, So what do you... Like, having a boyfriend probably takes up a good chunk of your time, but what do you do instead of going to the bars? I mean, go out for dinner. Yep, and that's enough. Go out for walks, like... I, I don't sub, – a substance does not bring me happiness. Good. And I, I don't know. Like there's – I get out of myself really. I get into other people. See, like is there people I can help? Like I don't live the same selfish life that I did before. Like I'm, you. I'm of service to other people now. Yeah, I think that that's huge. And I think that uh, like pure happiness comes from always being of service. Yeah. Rather than taking. Yeah. When did, when did taking ever make you happy? Really? Or at least long term. Not long term. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Let's let's fill that in. I'm like, I lived on self will for a while. Yeah. I mean, it was. So tell me about some of these like 
uh, these steps that you went through, like what are the ones that stuck with you the most? Or were I'm all about aha moments. So when did mm-hmm. you have the most aha moments in this in your in your recovery? I mean, or were they each of them just as equally effective? There's many, but they're and they're all equally important. I mean, I guess one was one of my first moments where I really realized I have something going on inside of me was I was dating a guy before Mm -hmm. my current boyfriend and it was pretty much like the personality I like I had that complete like I've said inability to love or be loved I was completely selfish yeah I I took like I took all the life out of him I manipulated him he was like I completely walked all over him and used him right and he was very, he was great. He was very supportive. He was amazing. But like, it's like when I saw these people in my life that I loved and they're like, I've had enough of you. Like even like my parents eventually changed the locks on the doors and they're like, get help or get out. Really? And Do you like, think that's how it has to be done? I mean, that was the best thing for me. Right. Because I've heard a lot of, like, this gentleman I'm talking about last week seems like it's the same thing for him. It seems like his parents are saying, like, you're on your own kind of thing. And it's like, I don't have parents that are, like, easy to quit on me. Right. Like, I have the most absolute loving, amazing, supportive parents I could ever ask for. Right. And they've given me all the love in the world I could ever want. And so, like, it's not like... So you really do have to help yourself at the end of the day. Yeah. It's like they can't do this for me. They've tried they've tried to do my eating disorder for me. They've tried to keep me on the straight and narrow all they could, but like yeah. you know what? You have to make change in yourself and it was deeper than this drug or this alcohol. It was like the person I was being and like Right. Like like I said, major moments were like losing people in my life that really cared about me and like that I really I realized that I walked all over and like was I was not being a good person. Like, when I relapsed, that was a big moment for me to realize, like, you know what? It's not just drugs. It's alcohol. Right. To do the steps was, like, the best thing that's ever happened to me. To take a full self-appraisal of everything I was doing, the person I was being, to go to the people I've hurt and say, you know what? I'm sorry. To not to not point any fingers back, but, like, not say, like, a hey, like, I'm sorry for this, but, you know, you did this, and that's why. Like, to take a full, like, look at myself Mm -hmm. and be able to say sorry to these people and make wrongs where I I could and just to, like, forgive myself, you know? Self-forgiveness is a big one, huh? Yeah, to be able to just, you know, I messed up, and that's not the person I am today. Right. I was a sick person. I'm not a bad person. No, no. And you obviously couldn't help it at the time. You didn't know what you were going through. Yeah. Right? So when you said that you did a lot of work on yourself, is that mm-hmm. is that the work of the steps? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Did you do anything outside of that? Um, or was that enough? Go to steps, go to the meetings. I mean, treatment was something I needed in that moment. Yeah. Going out there, I just went to meetings all the time. Once I picked up that book is when it changed my life. Okay. So when you went to went to rehab... Excuse me, this carbonated water is like <laughs> making me burp. No, that's okay. Um, so when you went to rehab and then they, they asked you to leave after a month, which wasn't like for the reasons that most people think, mm-hmm. did you go to AA right away or CA, sorry, yeah, right away? Uh, I went to NA at first. NA at first. What made you change? Like, what's the difference between NA and CA? C- Narcotics Anonymous, I mean, CA is based off the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, which was created back in time and it's been working for years. Like 1920 or something, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and NA, I mean, they have their own st- step working guide and I'm sure if you work it through and through, it's a lot of a longer process. Um, really? The other step work guide is just, it's a lot of, it's just different. Okay. I mean, I, for me, I didn't see I, what I wanted and needed in my life i saw at ca right and my best friend was going to ca and i went with him and like i looked around the room and i saw a ton of recovered people and i saw a ton like all of those recovered people who were just mm-hmm. like let's go let's help you let's get this you through this book like right people who lo- like really i could they had something i wanted yeah really that's really interesting mm-hmm. so if you, you felt like it was kind of calling you in a sense I mean, like, 
everyone has a different path in recovery and no path is wrong. Like Right, sure. So my path isn't wrong. Really, <laughs> even though you're I looking, was waiting yeah. for that and I was like, but yours <laughs> is Ooh, am I contradicting myself? That's okay. No, no, your path is not wrong. No. Everyone's different and at the end of the day if you're sober and you're happy and you're living a good life that's full for you. Yeah. You know what? All the power to you. Yeah, I I'm curious. I mean it's I feel that I probably have 